Have you ever heard of the term spectral evidence before? Spectral evidence is basing your claims and evidence off of visions and dreams that you may have had. However, from 1480 to about 1690, spectral evidence was considered credible and useful evidence in the New World and in Europe. Innocent individuals were accused of practicing witchcraft and mob mentality continually growed during this time due to these weird forms of evidence. Today, I am going to share with you what happens when fear gets out of control and mob mentality grows to the point that 100,000 innocent individuals lost their lives practicing witchcraft. Welcome or welcome back to the Consciously Nikki Network, a matrix of knowledge and enlightenment. Please consider subscribing, liking this video, and sharing it with your friends after you finish watching. It would mean a lot to me. Our story takes place in Europe in around 1500 AD, in which 80,000 to 100,000 individuals were said to have lost their lives, either by being burned at the stake or hanged because people thought they were practicing witchcraft or even worse, worshiping the devil, which was a huge Huge threat to society. In 1480 Europe, magic, science, and religion are all mixed up into one cauldron, for a lack of a better term today. The boundaries between these three only become quite clear around 1660, in which magic is completely banned altogether. This process was called secularization, and it was very scary. Also keep in mind that there are two forms of religion happening at this time. One was seen within the peasants, which was seen as very superstitious and eerie. And then you have the higher class who were practicing proper religion. Let's move on to where exactly in Europe these witch hunts were taking place. So it did occur pretty much throughout Europe. The biggest places were in Scandinavia, Germany, England, and France. There was a big important note I'd like to mention. Very few witch hunts occurred in Spain and also in Italy. Do any of you know why that is? Leave a comment down below right now. For those of you who don't know the answer, it's because the Inquisition was already running rampant through Italy and through Spain. And they had different targets already, the Conversos and the Moriscos, which were individuals who were already being burned at the stake as it was. Witch hunts throughout those areas were not their primary focus. Another thing I would like to mention are the three Ps, poverty, power, and the Pope. The very end of the 15th century, a lot of things started to change and capitalism began to rise. With that, cities started to emerge and peasants couldn't afford to stay on the land anymore and were being driven off. As a result, what would usually happen is you would see a higher occurrence of these poor people going from door to door in cities begging for food or bread. And when that happened, a lot of people would say, oh my god, that person is practicing magic, that person is disgusting, they're poor, keep away from them close the door never look them in the eye because of poor health as well a lot of poor people would be hunched over and that's where this like ideology of a witch being hunched over scary comes from actually thing disgusting as well as there was a huge grotesque hatred towards women during this time which made women even more susceptible to these threats during this time power is also a big issue because we start to see the rise of elites who want certain individuals in society taken care of and by that I mean destroyed. They would make these big spectacles, especially if you were a witch and you were caught, the burning of a witch would become a huge deal. Very much to the way we saw the guillotine last week being a huge deal, this event was too. What would happen in these instances is that you would have to admit that you were a worshipper of Satan publicly and that you regret it terribly. You also will have to ask for forgiveness from God and if you don't, terrible things will happen. I just wanted to bring forth the notion that these individuals had a lot of power and it's disgusting to think that this big group of hungry elitists were able to make all these innocent women and even men admit to things that were not true. We also have the split from Christianity in 1521 onwards, which created huge war throughout Europe. By the 16th century especially, Protestants and Catholics had created two different forms of Christianity, and those of which were not really tolerated amongst each other. Let's just backtrack really quickly to 1484. Pope Innocent VIII had caught wind of all these strange things happening in Northern Italy. What happens is the Pope ends up saying to the Inquisition, go up to those mountains and see what the hell is going on there. They were shocked by what they found, and 
and they ended up writing a report called the Malice Maleficarum, or in other words, the Hammer of the Witches. Basically, in the Malice Maleficarum, it stated three things. How to detect if someone's a witch, how to protect yourself if you end up coming near a witch, and how to deal with the witch judiciously. Let's get into the Malice Maleficarum and how to detect a witch, because it's quite humorous now, looking at it. This work became the manual of Protestant and Catholic witch hunters who used it at every moment to detect who was a witch. It was very misogynist and ridiculous. The book starts off by explaining why women are so weak and easily susceptible to the devil. How do you become a witch? Well first, you must sign a pact with the devil and this pact must be signed with your blood because it will last for eternity. You have to promise to give your soul in which he will grant you whatever you would like. Once this is done, the devil is said to imprint you with a mark to prove that he now has your soul. And a lot of us already have marks on us which are commonly known as birthmarks. But the witch hunters believed that any birthmark that was seen, you're a witch. Once all that is done, the next thing you will do is deny your faith in Jesus and practice homage only to the devil. And last but not least, you must eat a child. When you look at things such as Hansel and Gretel, now you know why she eats children, because it comes from the Malice Maleficarum. Was any of this true? No. But it helped them with their theories and construction of what they needed to do in order to create peace in their society. A lot of women were burned at the stake, and a lot of men were as well. And this phenomenon got out of control. It's quite disgusting to actually think about how many individuals lost their life to this nonsense. Modern science has shown that a lot of the women in Europe who are seen as being witches actually maybe ingested some form of a drug in the forest. So it could have been a poison mushroom and that's why they were acting the way they were throughout Europe at that time. Many of you are more familiar with the Salem witch trials. So I want to get into that right now. We're going to continue our story into Boston, Massachusetts and look at Salem. Because what ends up happening here is the Puritans come on over from Europe who had this deep belief that Lucifer was still chasing them and that at any moment they could be taken by the devil. So they were even more hysterical over here. I want to talk to you about an individual named Cotton Mather. He truly believed that the covenant that the Puritans had with God was slowly being diminished more and more because of younger people. He started seeing signs from the Lord that things were going downhill suddenly. All of a sudden he started seeing roaring fires, which in reality were just ways that the natives were clearing the land at the time. He saw things like up in the sky, most commonly were meteorites. Then he felt the ground trembling, which was an earthquake recorded at that time, but he truly believed it was Lucifer from under shaking the earth. This guy firmly believed that within Salem there were a whole bunch of witches who had to have sold their soul to the devil, but now he was going to take it upon himself to clear out all of them. Another individual who's quite important to the story and where we start to see witchcraft and the trials really take off in Salem is Minister Samuel Paris. Now, Minister Samuel Paris ended up bringing over two indentured servants from the Caribbean who he wanted to work with in his house, one of which was named Tichuba. And Tichuba had a lot of voodoo that she had from the Caribbean and it really interested the two girls, Abigail and Betty, who were the daughters of Samuel Paris. Tichuba was a very smart lady and knew that practicing or showing any of this voodoo, which would be very easily misinterpreted by the idiot Samuel Paris, she never practiced it. But the two young daughters were so desperate and really wanted to see what powers that she had. One day when Samuel Paris is out of the house, the two girls Abigail and Betty beg Tichuba to conjure for them and just asking silly things such as who am I gonna marry am I gonna find the love of my life and Tichuba you know very hesitantly did not want to do it so just had a little bit of fun but not to the full extent of showing them everything she's conjuring for them and the girls are giddy and happy one day their father ends up coming home early and catches Tichuba presenting this information to the girls which was all in good fun but the stupid girls decided to jump on to the floor screaming and wailing that they've been cursed, they've been bewitched by Tichiba, oh my god what's happened and it was all a fake lie because they wanted to get her into trouble. Now Samuel Paris is freaking out saying oh my god she's now cursed my two daughters, now this is witchcraft that Tichiba is practicing. You see how like one small little instant can make a huge disaster? Physicians come and they basically diagnose the girls as being bewitched and now they're looking at Tichiba saying uh uh 
this cannot go on. You're the reason for witchcraft. You need to go. Now the two girls are playing it up because they knew they would have gotten into big trouble if they admitted the truth. Physicians are like, oh, okay, who afflicts you? Like, who did this to you? What ends up happening is now you could throw names at people that you didn't like and blame it on them for the reason why you've been possessed. The Salem witch hunt actually now starts to go full throttle after this moment. Right away, you are jailed. There's no trials. You're just put directly into jail. And obviously, these are not the jails of what we're thinking today. They were nasty, rat infected, tiny, dark, cold cells. Also chained to the wall because heaven forbid, I mean, you're a witch, you could fly away, right? 18 women end up being hanged from this. Unfortunately, Tichuba also became a victim to this disaster and Giles Corey was another one who lost his life. Giles Corey is interesting because on top of the hangings that you would see within the Massachusetts Salem hunt, you would also see the pressing and compression of rocks. What happened is the individual would be lying down and the person in charge of checking to see if you were a witch or a warlock would keep asking you questions. Are you in connection with the devil? Do you admit to disobeying the rules of Jesus? All these questions and every time you would say obviously no because you're not, they would add another rock on top of you and they were heavy rocks. Eventually what would happen, there would be so much pressure on you, your lungs would collapse because you can't take any more. Giles Corey is pretty much there and they're about to put one more rock on top of him and they say this is probably the one that's going to do it. Do you admit to being a warlock? And Giles Corey, apparently historians have said, he looks at them and says more rocks and they add another rock and he dies. Now eventually all this had to come to an end because a lot of this evidence like I mentioned before was spectral which means that people were literally running around screaming saying oh I had a dream, I had a dream, she's a witch, she's a witch, I saw her in my dream she possessed me and that was enough for them to take you put you into jail without a fair trial and then the next day condemn you or hang you it got to the point that people that were high up were getting convicted of being a witch now you see Samuel Paris's wife being convicted as a witch and now it's gone too far as many of you know who study history after this period we start to see the enlightenment where reason and practical thinking actually take over instead of the spectral evidence people as well were tired of being being ganged up on and taken advantage of. But although the enlightened period only lasted for a while, again, as you saw, the French Revolution happens where this craze comes again. Hitler coming to power happens. There's so many moments in history where this mob mentality, scary ideologies come forth. And it's very important to question everything and really do research for yourself before believing what's being put out there. That is all for today's episode. Please leave a comment down below what you think of the witch trials that occurred in Europe and a lot of the new world. In addition, I would love to hear from you on ways you think our society can ensure mob mentality does not occur anymore. With that being said, stay conscious, do your reading, question everything, and I will see you all next week.